Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video, I want to expand upon some of the things we've been covering recently with regards to WordPress and that's how we can keep in touch with potential customers and how we can just sort of help improve our sales, our online presence and just sharing the information that we may have as part of our website with interested parties. So someone who's a content creator, one of the primary and key things that you want to do is make sure that when you create content, you can spread that out to the largest viewership available to you. Okay, so now that we're in the admin section of WordPress, what I need to do is just jump over like I have at the moment into the plugins and click to add a new plugin. And then we're just going to search for a plugin called MB Image Chimp RSS Feed Enhancer. It's a very catchy title. I'll put a link to the description below so you'll know you look at the right thing. It hasn't been updated in quite some time, but I've had no issues with it whatsoever because it has a very simple job, and that's just literally to add in the relevant little bit of HTML code into your RSS feed to pull in the image from the featured images. And like I say, this has worked perfectly for me, and I've got it working on multiple different sites without a problem. So what I need to do is just click Install Now. We'll let that run through the installation process and we'll activate it when it's finished. Once it's done that, we'll just take a look at the RSS feed and we'll see that we've now got that additional bit of information in there. So we installed it, let's activate it. Once we've done that, there's pretty much nothing else to do. It's pretty much gonna work straight out the box. Okay, so that's now installed. Everything is set up, ready to go. So if you wanna access your RSS feed, all you need to do is go over to the front end of your site and go to the URL that is your site put a forward slash at the end of it, and then just put the word feed in there. And you'll see once you press enter, you'll then find all of the feed that is your RSS feed. Now you can see that we've got a ton of information in there. It's a lot of gobbledygook to most of us, and don't worry about that. All that matters is that this pulls the information that's relevant and required from your feed inside WordPress. We can then utilize that information inside MailChimp to create our RSS feed based newsletters. Pretty cool. So this is everything we need. You can see it's got the title in there and the date it was created and some text and all these kind of good things. So what we need to do now once we've got that set up is we can jump over into MailChimp and we can take a look at how we can start using that information. And before we do, there's one thing I need and that is to grab the URL for that information. So we're gonna copy that and then we've got the URL now that has our feed. So we can jump over to MailChimp and we can start building up the newsletter based upon the information that's been pulled from our website. So we just jump into MailChimp. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new campaign. So we're just gonna to click to create a new campaign. So the first thing we need to do now is go through and set up the parameters for our RSS feed and to deal with everything. So once you create your new campaign, it's gonna bring you to this option and we're gonna do is say, let us guide you. We click on there, and it gives us a couple of options now to go through and specify how we want this campaign to work. Well, the option we're going to choose is connect with your contacts. So we're going to click on there, and if we scroll down, you can see we've got share blog updates. So we click on there. That allows us to name the campaign, which we're going to call this sample RSS feed. We can then choose the list from the lists that we have available to us inside MailChimp. So I'm going to choose the list I want to work with, and I'm going to click on begin. And once we do that, that's going to take us over now and it's going to allow us to go through and set up some of the basic parameters for our RSS feed. So the first thing we're going to do is go in there and put in the URL that is our feed, which we copied earlier on. So let's just paste that in there. Now we can go through and say, well, when do we want to send this out? Do we want to send something every day at a specific time? Do we want to send it only on certain days? You know, there's a whole range of different options. Now I would suggest, unless you're sending out something that people really want to consume that information on a daily basis, I would recommend limiting this to either once a week, once a fortnight, once a month, somewhere around that kind of thing. Because if you get a little bit too frequent, you're going to end up alienating potential customers or potential viewers and visitors. So keep those things in mind when you schedule things on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this to be every week on, let's just go for example, a Tuesday at 8 p.m., which is considered to be a pretty good time if you're dealing with, should we say, leisure-based things. So with things like WordPress and things like that, where I'm just dealing with people that wanna learn things, an evening time is probably better. If you're dealing with businesses and you want to keep in touch with business people, then there are lots and lots of sites out there that will give you information and statistics on when is the best day and the best time to send you information out. 
Now, if you deal with an international audience, then this goes way beyond what we can do in this particular tutorial. And MailChimp has a ton of options available to you so you can really get down and fine tune exactly when and how you send information out to people based upon their location. But for now, we're going to keep this one really, really simple. So we're going to say, yes, there's our feed. We want to send this every week on a Tuesday at 8 p.m. And this is based upon British London time. Do you want to resize the RSS feed images to fit the template? Yes, I would recommend doing that just to make sure that your design looks much better. You can see underneath if you've got any questions, there's a lot of frequently asked questions you can go through and specify you know, a lot of answers and things you might sort of encounter when you're setting this up. But once you've got that set, we can now go through and click on next so we can jump over to the next stage of this and start working on the recipients. So now we've got the option to choose exactly who and how we want to send this information out. So you can see we can send it to everybody in our entire list. If we wanted to, we could go through any of the saved or pre-built segments as part of our list. Or we could create a new group or a new segment. So I'm going to keep this really simple. I'm going to keep this to the entire list so everybody would receive this. Next up, we're going to click on Next, and that'll take us over to the Setup tab, and we can now go through and set up and choose various different options. So you can see once we do this, we've got the campaign name, which is pulled in from the beginning when we created this. We've got a ton of options based upon whether you've got the free or paid plan and the kind of things that you want to do. Again, I would recommend taking your time, having a look over this, and see if there's anything in there you think is relevant to the campaign that you're sending out. Next up, you can see we've now got the email subject, and we've also got a couple of tags in there that are specific to dealing with the RSS feed. Now, there are a ton of tags that you can use when you're creating your campaigns, and you can use them in your titles, you can use them in the actual content. There's a whole range, and I'll put a link to an article that gives you a full breakdown of all those different RSS feed-based tags that you can use, so you really can get in and fine-tune the campaign that you want to send out. We're going to say the from name, and we're just going to call this WP Tuts. And the email address, you can set that up on there. If you've got people's names in there, you can go through and personalize the tool field. Like I say, let's just leave that and just jump over to the next step, which is the template. So this section of the process allows us to go through and choose a predefined layout that we can use as the basis. We can go through and pick themes. We can choose from any save templates, any campaigns, or we could go in and code our own. As I said, we're going to keep this pretty simple for this particular video. So let's come down. We're going to choose the basic one column layer. We'll click on that to choose it. We can preview it if we wanted to. And that'll now jump us over into the actual editor area. We can start building up our actual template that's going to be used as the basis for our RSS feed email. So you can see if we take a look on the right hand side, we've got a ton of different options in there. And because we've set up an RSS feed, we've now got some different options that are not available if you choose an ordinary type of newsletter or email to be sent out via MailChimp. You can see we've got RSS header, RSS items. So we now have the ability to pull in the information from there. And all we can do is we can just simply drag that over, drop it where we want it. And you can see this now has some predefined tags in there, the RSS feed title, the RSS feed description, and so on. So that will then go through, look at the title for our blog post, it'll look at the description for our blog post, and it'll put that information in there. Now you can see we've got a couple of options on the right hand side. We've got two tabs, we've got the content and the style. And you can see the style will allow us to go through and do things like choose the font, the color, the style, line height, so the visual kind of setup things. What we do is, if we go back to the content, you can see we've got the option that allows us to show us the markup. So you can see there's the feed markup. Now, this is obviously HTML and based upon the tags that are being used. Now, this might be something that you're comfortable with. It might be something you're not that comfortable with. But in all honesty, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And I'd suggest just taking your time, seeing what's been done on there, and just getting stuck in and seeing how you can work with it. There's plenty of guides out there that will show you how to use this. And if you want to know more about the tags that you can use, you can see the option that says RSS Merge Tags. We can click on there. That now opens up a new tab. And you can see that shows us all of the different tags we can use for this RSS feed. And there are a lot of them. So you can see we can go through. And we've got a ton of different options in there we can pull up. Now, I'd highly recommend bookmarking this page because this is something that really is very, very useful when you're going through and you're collating and building up a sort of library of RSS feed-based templates that you want to use in future uh, sort of mail shots. Now, at the moment, even though we've set up that plugin in WordPress to pull in the, the images that we use as our featured image in our blog posts, 
that's not going to be used at this point in time in our RSS feed. So we need to go and put that little bit of code in it to say that we want the image to be used as part of the design. Now at the moment, we can't actually make any changes to this because this is just for us to view what's being used. What we need to do is come up where it says basic and we can come on there and you can see we've got a couple of options. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down to custom. And that will open up the normal editor where we can start going in and we can start formatting things in a visual way and we can use those different sort of tags and so on. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over to the source view and that takes me in so I can now see all the source code that's being used behind the scenes. And this is pretty straightforward to work with. If you're used to HTML at all, nothing in there is going to be shocking to you. The only difference is where you've got things like these tags that are specific to working with the RSS feed this part of MailChimp. So what I need to do is come in and put where I want the picture to be placed. So the easiest thing to do is I've got the title, then underneath that we've got the description. Well I want the description to sit below the actual picture itself and the title above it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, make a space in there and I'm going to put in this little block of code, which what this does is this gives us the URL to the article and it also shows the image that's going to be used in there. Now. I'll pause this on screen, for, or I'd recommend pausing this on screen so you can see exactly what I've done on there and you can use the identical code. Obviously make sure that what you're writing in there is exactly the same as what I've put in there and that will then create a link in that image and show the image itself as part of your feed when you create those newsletters. So that's it. That's all I want to do. If you want to get in and become a lot more creative and you're comfortable with this, then you can use any of those RSS merge tags with some simple HTML code and you can really find tune and tweak and create a newsletter that's exactly what you want. I'm not going to go through all that right now because this is more of an introduction to how to do it as opposed to everything that's going to be done in there. So once I'm done with that, I can just jump back and we'll say we don't want to look at the feed anymore or say the code anymore. You can see now my image is set in there and any of the other information that I've got is already placed in there. If I want to, I can come back and go back to basic. You see that now gets rid of what we just put in there. So I can go through and I can choose a whole range of predefined options or I can use the custom option we've just created so I can really get fine tuning and just get exactly what I want in there. Once I've done that, I'm just going to click on next and that'll take us through now and we can just say we want to confirm everything is in place and you can see we've now gone through it says okay there's a there's a problem here because we have the default text content so you have to go through and set that up as part of the process but we don't need to do that in this video because this is not to do with how you use MailChimp it's how you use RSS feeds with MailChimp so resolve that set everything up on there and then you're basically good to go we can just set save this out and test it if we want to so what we can do now is we could go through and we can check out a preview and test and we can send ourselves a practice email just to make sure that everything is sort of laid out the way we want and showing everything we want in there or we can just preview it with some live data so let's just do that let's just come up to the preview and test click on there and we'll say let's enter preview mode so we can click on there that will now go through and enable the live merging of the information pulled from our RSS feed and show us exactly what it's like in this email so you can see this now is a live feed of information based upon the basic template we put together and the information we've used in that RSS feed and what this is now showing us is a live preview of the latest item that I've got on the website as part of the RSS feed. And you can see we've got information underneath it about what's being pulled from that particular post on my website. Now, if you've got multiple different posts, this will start to go through and it'll create additional information on this. So when you send something out and you've done two or three updates since the last email was sent out, then this will have all of that information in there showing you all the relevant posts. So like I said, you can get a lot more creative with this. You can use a lot of the tags in there to get a lot more information into it, or you can keep it really simple and straightforward. Links back to your website and a whole range of different things you can do. And that really is all there is to it. Now, I know it's pretty sort of a pretty complicated subject if you're not accustomed to working with this, but if you are comfortable working with some HTML code and you are comfortable with MailChimp, then the whole process is pretty straightforward and painless. Now, once you've set that up, that will become a live ongoing campaign. So every time in that frequency you set up at the beginning of the process, you'll have an email sent out at that frequency with new information. If there's new information on your, your feed, if there's not, nothing will be sent out. So bear that in mind. It's not a one click, one send is done that'll keep on running ad infinitum until you stop it or pause it so bear that in mind anyway 
I hope you found this useful. I hope it's covered something that will help you spread the word about what you're creating out there as part of your WordPress website or blog. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content added every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback or suggestions for future videos, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.